Hello and welcome friends to another Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft here on the channel. Today we're geeking out over draft again. I think this is draft number three. I've lost count or maybe I'm not counting anymore. And again, we are going to be playing Outlaws of Thunder Junction, the current standard set on MTG Arena. And I want to do these drafts to educate everybody about the wonders and fun of playing Magic the Gathering draft. And it's still a great game. And I think it's a better game more than ever. And one of my favorite ways to play Magic the Gathering is not just, uh, not just tournament constructed, but draft. So, um, all right, here we go again. So... I think the booster pack right now, because they recently changed, they changed it so much. Um, let's see here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, and then one is a land. So, 13 cards. They're gonna work with 13 cards. Uh, 13 picks per round. And we're gonna do it three rounds. Okay. So, usually, you wanna take a look at... So, there's rares, uncommons, and common. And usually the rares are the powerful ones, but we, we we got one of the Dudleyer rares, the disc rares, the weak rares. It's just basically a land. So you, I've highlighted Desert's Jew here. Um, it's a two mana minus two minus two instant speed. It's a good removal spell, um, and I'm picking that over any of the uncommons also, which I think are quite ordinary. They feel like not star players but role players in your deck. I'll, I'll try to explain that as we go along. But removal is very important in games of Magic. And in Draft also, because there's five colors in Magic, you don't always know. Um, so you want to form a deck of one or two, one to three colors. Usually you end up with a two-color deck. Like a, now we're black, so we can be black, white, black, green, black, red. And you don't know at the start. Um, what that color is going to be. And basically, you are going to read the table, what cards are being passed to you, and figure out if there's a particular color they're ignoring. Ideally, ideally that's what you're doing. So I've highlighted Journey to Nowhere here. It's only one card missing in this pack, obviously, because it's just after pick one. But it's another removal spell. It's a two-mana enchantment-based removal spell that uh, exiles... A creature regardless of cost regardless of power and toughness that's a very good removal spell and in formats like draft most of the powers will be coming from just these tough creatures to kill so i think i'm gonna pick up that ideally i would have picked up another um black card but that's just too good not to pick okay okay what do we have here so i see a back for more Back for more is a green black format four colorless instant effect that returns target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield and then it fights up to one target creature. So it's six mana, but the play pattern is actually very good because you can do a instant speed when your opponent attacks, bring back a creature from the graveyard, make it a blocker, fight another creature, things like that. So you can interact with multiple creatures and blow out huge boards in the game. Uh, and really come back. The problem is it's black green, and we don't know uh, if we're already black green. We actually have a white card, and we only have thirteen. So thirteen times see thirty nine picks, right? Or was it twelve? I said thirteen picks. And okay, and um, dang, dang, these are both good cards. So one one of the things I like to do is check the like this website um, 17 lands which sort of um, yeah, I, I agree actually it's telling me that um, Vault Plunderer has a better game in hand win rate than Stubborn Burrow Fiend okay. and game in hand win rate is you know how much the players who have this in their hand go on to win the game Um, where was I? So I'm just we're just trying to navigate uh which color we want to be in. I'm gonna pick up the Vault Plunderer here over the stubborn Burrow Fiend. I think Burrow Fiend is pretty good. But I already have a desert do. Wow. Are we going for this? Reanimate. It's basically a 
uh, a way to bring back a creature from your from your graveyard for one mana. And there are some ways to put things in your graveyard here. We should have picked up the Burrow Fiend. So the Burrow Fiend puts things in the graveyard. We could have done a reanimate turn. Uh, that is lost. I went for the more generically powerful card. I just Vault Plunder. It's a creature that comes with come in as a 3-1 and then draws you a card. Pretty good because you don't run out of gas in games of limited. I'm just going to pick up the reanimate. It feels like black is open and I feel like we can block black. I'm going to pick up the gulch here over the rise of the worm. There's also a slick shock lock, slick shock lock picker. Huh. I might have to pick up the slick shot lock picker actually. This is very late. This is a very good blue card in the format. It's basically another effect that interacts with your graveyard. Let's you reuse a card that uh, has not a card, uh, instant or sorcery, maybe a removal spell, a desert to do, do it again. This is really good. It's like a star player type of card in most decks. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm a bit confused about this about this table right now. So as, as I said at the start, you're trying to read um, the table um, because ideally the cards are equally distributed. The colors are equally distributed. And um, we haven't seen any red cards that I'm excited to pick. So I have a feeling the people to our right are in red. Uh, but we have seen a lot of green and then a smattering of white, blue, Things like that. So I'm gonna pick, continue picking the black cards, hoping to understand what this table wants us to be doing. So this has been an interesting draft so far because I'm getting past at the tail end of the draft, pick eight. Um, not bad cards. It's very rare to see bad cards now in the format, but not bombs and star players. Just a lot of these. Eh, meh, you can do without kind of cards. I'm I'm sort of Wow, okay. I'm sort of Huh. Huh. So these two cards are interesting to me. If I feel like I'm gonna be more graveyard based and crime based, I want this. If I'm more generally just a general I think I'm gonna pick this up, I think. Just to keep on blocking black because this is just generally okay, I guess. Also, if you're splashy, splashy, this is also okay. Dang. Okay. So, pick ten or pick nine is it means because there's eight players in the table means that was pack before that was my original pack. It went around the table. There was still a forsaken miner here. This 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 pack of cards, this five cards, also went around the table. Nobody wanted to take the fall. I really like this. It's a one-mana interaction spell that replaces itself, draws a card. And I have a feeling the table, as you can see, at the as, as per the leftover cards, there's a there's blue, there's black. So the table is blocking green, they're blocking blue, they're blocking red and sorry, red and white. Blue, maybe not. So we will use that to our advantage. So there's this concept in in draft wherein if you you draft according to what's open and obviously what everybody else is ignoring here is the blue and black cards and our our plan now is to sort of um try to maneuver around the cards being passed to us and make sure we have the best Blue and black cards. Alright, what is this? Vraska the Silencer. Whenever down to your fully controls dies, you may pay one if you do. Wow, that seems pretty good. I want to see the win rate of that. Is it good? Vraska the Silencer. Pretty hard to use, I would say. I'm not convinced it's good, actually. It seems very. Very. I've, I've still got the Honest Rutstein as the uh, card. Uh, I'm not I'm not convinced it's a good card. I'm going to pick up Honest Rutstein. 
One, there's no good blue and black card, unfortunately, that we open. This is just a very good uh, black green card. We do have the back for more already. Um, so, if ever, I might end up trying to splash green as my third color in this deck. Okay, it's online, guys. We can do Spinewoods Armadillo in three animate combo <laughs> so the combo is you can what is this mind be crap what's the armor you pay zero ah yeah that's fine um the combo is basically you discard spinewoods armadillo into your graveyard uh using its discard ability find the land and then reanimate so we can do that on turn three if we're lucky that we can do it all okay there's also consuming ashes here probably that's the pick if we're black but we already have a back four more. We have an honest rut steel. I might just force the green black now, I think. Um, even though the table has been more of so we're gonna be either green, blue, or green black. And then uh let's see. Ooh, another one. Another. Uh I know I said the slick shock lock picker is like a uh all star and there's also a blue black card here so obviously the table wants us to be blue black so let's see what happens if we remove the blue and we just keep on playing our black cards it's still not bad to be honest so these are our spells in black these are our creatures this is white probably not gonna play it these are a removal spell i don't want to play this for nizumi life link breaker it's not bad it's not bad and we don't have great spells to copy with uh with the slick shock lock, lock picker i'm i'm down for a second um for a second for the second honest ruts team now we want things that put things in the graveyard uh let's see this is black white i'm gonna pick up this blooming marsh it's not a desert unfortunately but and the uh, Spinewoods Armadillo can't even find it. Uh, but. But, but, but. Uh, it's black-green. So it, it's just a really easy card for us to cast. Uh, it Sorry, it really helps us cast our cards. That's the third? Honest Rutstein? Huh. So these like five players to our right left now because we're passing to the right are not black green because they either they don't know how good Honest Ruts team is or uh, they're just not black green. So the power of Honest Ruts team is it comes in, gets a card from the graveyard. Could be our Spinewoods Armadillo that we put in the graveyard. And then... Uh, and then we can get back get it back to our hand basically an extra resource and then it also discounts features moving forward count me in man okay i don't we don't need more of these effects this is the black green archetype um uh black green archetype other um role player star player it gets a creature from the gear back to the battlefield we already have three honest rut steens in the back for more i'm gonna get the patient naturalist basically it mills me three cards gets any lands from the graveyard and then we uh we create a treasure token so that's a way for us to fill up our graveyard so our honest ruts team we can use it for value okay what do we have here kind of get the fake your own death i want a pylon at some point but i do want the fake your own death um, because it's a, it's sort of a protection spell in this format. There's a lot of removal spells. So imagine faking the death of Spinewood's Armadillo on his Rutstein or Ambush Gigapede. Their enter the battlefield effects happens again. So let's do that. I learned this from other, other, I guess, uh, content creators. If you don't have a lot of removal spells, and I really don't like this as a removal spell, you can uh, rely on death, death that creatures to sort of be a removal spell and slow down the game. We'll do that. We'll pick up an ankle biter here. Let's pick up Boneyard Desecrator. And so I think, I think green is still being contested. 
um, but not black green specifically. We might be the only black green drafter in the table. I don't like Iron Archway. We don't have a lot of deserts anyway. We're gonna get the this. It's a, this is an okay card. It's not great. It's, huh? What is happening? What is happening, man? So we might have to play this door key removal spell. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna rare draft. So rares, if you don't know, are worth extra 20 gems if you complete all four. So let's do that. Full steam ahead is a card I probably won't play, but shows the persons to our right that we are serious about not giving them any green or black cards anymore. <laughs> it will discourage them. Uh, and then, I don't know if I'll play this luxurious locomotive. I mean, oh! It's so weird. Um, so excellent. We don't have any two drops right now, which is awful. But we have a Raven of Fell Omens. We're not very good in dealing Prime, to be honest. But, 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 but. Uh, so what's... Okay. We, we've been... Oh, sorry. This is a much better card. I'm sorry. Uh, so we have a Desert do. We only have... Uh, I'm really torn between this Outcaster green for the audio bit. I'm really torn. Oh my god. The Outcaster green bit is so good. Yes, it's so good. I think it's not even a question between Outcaster green bit and throw from the saddle. The only reason I'm just thinking about because this is a removal spell and as you can see I'm pretty short on removal spells. But let's play the Outcaster Green Blade, guys. It's, it's just too good. Okay, the. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> so, us blocking black has sort of. Uh, has sort of resulted in us. Uh, getting the benefits, as I said, because nobody else is black in the table, I think. And they're just giving us these powerful black rares. Which is, this is basically a two-mana removal spell on turn two for us. Or, a just a uh, board wipe, minus two, minus two. The only problem, I guess, is we have so many creatures which are less than two life. And, uh, this might end up being worse for us, but I'm gonna pick it up. There's no way I don't pick it up, right? I guess we pick up Blood Hustler here. It Noting it's not particularly good in our deck because we don't have a way to hmm, deal a crime. But let's pick it up. Blood Hustler. Uh, over Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Bristle Pack Sentry. Skullduggery. Or in this land. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. Unfortunate accent over Vault Plunderer, I believe, is the correct play here. We're just really, really short on uh, interaction. And uh, Accident is just a really good removal spell. Again, we're missing out on a, another land, another desert that we could use, a Vault Plunder. Because the nice things about these deserts is they also trigger crime. We're not very good with triggering crime, unfortunately. But I do need the removal spell. Go there. Okay, I'll pick this up. Um, this is another way to get back cards from the graveyard. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, things. Oh, wow. Hers is pretty good, guys. Huh? Hers is pretty good. Uh, but I think I just think the land is going to be so much better for my deck. Like, I think I have enough creatures already. Yeah, I'm just gonna get the land, actually. But hers is pretty good. But the only reason I did that is because I want a bit of consistency in my deck. Do I want Rooftop Assassin or the Grizzly? Uh, actually, not sure. Hmm. Might just pick up the Grizz Grizzly because it's a bit cheaper. Just cost between these two. I'm just gonna pick up the Grizzly. Mm. So Baron Bertram is interesting. We already have a white land. 
we have a luxurious locomotive which we can play as a five drop and just also generate treasures for us we can go deep and pick up a baron bertram every time we create the trigger let's, let's think about it okay this this is just excellent in our deck because we do need to if we're splashing baron bertram um that's gonna be good but the thing is i don't think baron, baron bertram is as good in our deck the only thing that creates uh, tokens in our deck is the is I think I'm gonna get the bucolic branch. Just this is a way to sort of it's a scryland. It's other abilities. Look at the top card of your grave. If it's a mount card, you may reveal it. It's just a way to scry things off the top of your graveyard. Get that? Ooh! This coming back is legitimately amazing. I don't think we're playing the package. Do that, guys. Uh yeah. And getting deserts also work. With the deserts do again we're not super good at i might have to play this uh in order to just um have ways to deal deal crime i don't like playing second buzzard we already have one buzzard which is painful enough put this to the side put this to the side okay so I think we have an interesting deck that will want to use the graveyard a lot because we have a back for more three honest rutsteens. So uh unfortunately we have a pretty slow uh deck, I think. Its strength is really at the end game when we can sort of revive these things. Uh is there anything I really hate in this deck? I don't like the Black Snag Buzzard. I don't like the Boneyard Desecrator in our deck. I also don't like the Boombox in our deck. Is there anything we want to splash? I think... I don't mind splashing the Journey to Nowhere. Because... It's such a good removal spell. It just takes care of things. We already have one white. We have a Spinewoods Armadillo. To sort of find that white. We have a Mirage Mesa. Might just do that. We have a Outcaster Greenblade to find the Forlorn Flats. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. I think that's the only card. I wanna... Just a bit of consistency in terms of removal spells in our deck. Uh... Not a huge fan of the Desecrator, but also not a huge fan of the Black Snag Buzzard. But I think this is the... That's the lesser evil. It's usually a use cost as a tie break. So let's get rid of that. I guess we're playing the reanimate. <laughs> we can reanimate Ambush Gigapede, Pinewoods Armadillo, Harvester of Misery... Or well, what does it do? The cost is we lose life equals its mana. It's not a cheap cost. Let's see if it's worth it, guys. Are we playing Boombox? We might play Boombox. I've seen people play Boombox. I don't think it's great, but uh, are we better off playing Boombox? So if we don't play Boombox, we're probably just supposed to play the this. Right. Uh, outlaws. Have a way. Big outlaws. Yeah, I guess. Guess we cut one planes. I guess this is it. The more creatures we have, also the the naturalist is a bit better the honest rot steam is a bit better all right i've convinced myself we're not playing the boombox kind of don't like it it's, it's such a clunky removal spell six mana and we don't have ways to ramp anyway so let's 
try this. So we have one, two, technically three, four, which is Spinal Jarmadillo. But Caster Green Blades as ways to find Desert's Jew creates a treasure. Alright. I play 16 lands, guys. Uh you will you there's hopefully less mulligan. So let's see how good our starting hand here. Um, we're we're against Amarino. Okay, this is not a bad hand, right? This is great. We have black, white, and green. This is all our colors, actually. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's start this way. I guess what we want to draw is a two drop and nothing much from our opponent, please. It's not a two drop, but we can remove something scary from them instant speed because we can discard this. So let's go and do that. The opponent did not play anything. They might be playing a counter spell here. Do we play into it? Let's see. They're not playing counter spell. Let's draw a card. Okay. We want second black, I guess, for this. And that's probably what we're going to look for with our outcaster green blade. Second black. Well, no. Never mind. We found the second black source. Uh, let's attack here. He's probably going to trade. Yep. No. No trading, my friend. No, I. Let's play Outcaster Green Blade. Find another desert to play out. Uh, let's play at the bu Bucolic Branch. Uh, ranch. Uh, so we can start. If we don't want to play something, we can do the um, spend three to scry. Right? Uh, let's do that. Hit one. It's also a desert. It makes. Uh, Outcaster Green Blade a bit bigger. Next turn, we probably play out the Swamp. And I think we go Honest Rutstein, Vault Plunder next turn. So remember, this gives a discount, right? See what the opponent does. So, opponent does nothing here. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. We have a removal spell. On free strike, com free strider commando. In case he does that, attack first. Attack. Get the honest rutstein. Make sure we tap the mana correctly. Get back the vault plunderer. Vault plunderer draws us a card again. And gas never ends, fam. And we don't need any more lands. Please stop it. Uh, we have a removal spell in hand. Let's go. I might just aim the removal spell at the opponent. Yep. But it does depend. I remember this is zero mana because it was plotted. Don't know what the opponent's planning here. Let's see. Might be a removal spell also. Which is going to be unfortunate. Okay, I guess green blade is the thing to kill here. If you want to point a removal spell. Then again, you have a good blocker right now. So you are not necessarily pressured to do to fire off the removal spell now. You can sort of wait for my... That's great, I have two more <laughs> honest but steens in the deck. <laughs> Friend. So that's excellent. Wow, he he milled this intimidation campaign. I, wow, why is that, friend? Wow. Oh well, now we can't do. I guess we still can. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm gonna fake my own death here. Because again, their ETB's trigger. Uh. Let's do that. That's actually a bit better. And we get to keep our our removal spell. Oof, you're going to see the power of fake your own death. Fake our own death. Fire it off. Ooh, Outcaster Green Blade comes back. 
does its thing again. Did we play a land already? I hope not. But let's go. Oh, we played a land already. What an idiot, Jake. Why did you play a land first? Uh, well, because I'm an idiot. And then I guess we just play out the... Anyway, this is our last desert anyway. But let's see. Let's see, let's see. Uh, huh, huh, huh. thing that the opponent decided to... decided to do something else. By Harvester of Misery? Gosh, I hope not. Don't kill the Outcaster Green. Don't kill it. Change your mind. Change your mind. Uh, change your mind. So, opponent seems to be a green black deck splashing intimidation campaign. Okay. Opponent decides. So hold up mana, hold up four mana. Okay, let's go play the Mirage Mesa. I think we're gonna make that. We already have white, right? In case we draw that. Two black. We have unfortunate accident up in case. This is whole this whole hassle because other creatures and then it also affects our creatures, so whatever. Whatever. Back. Go. He has a removal spell in hand, probably. Outcaster Green Blade. Yep. Ash is that. That means we cannot. Uh, he has five cards and a lot of action left. I'm gonna put the stop on my main in case we wanna cry. Let's see. He's down to. Uh, down to 8. Opponent is down to 8. Do we have anything in our graveyard? Our graveyard is empty! Our graveyard base deck is empty because he's fired off two exile spells. How uncool, friend. I'm kind of scared. Because you know how magic works. They can sort of end our lives here. But I think. I think if they play out a creature here, we're in a good spot. Oh, I think they're gonna do a, you know. Mourner surprise? They're looking at their graveyard. They're looking at their graveyard. What's happening here? Amarino. Um okay. might be their own uh, back for more. Six mana is the magic number for back for more. Of course, that won't work out for them. Well, that's fine. Huh? Okay. Alright. Mm -hmm. That's annoying. That's slightly annoying. Actually, we got this, I think. Yeah, I think so. We're gonna have unfortunate accident. Gonna trigger the raven. Yeah, we got this. And we can actually just do this now. Oh, no, no, no. We wait for next turn. So we trigger the uh, raven again. Um, Yeah, we draw. Back for more. It's our own back for more. Uh, main. We don't have anything, but we're about to put our Harvester of Misery in the graveyard. So, yep. He's dead. Five attack. Dead. Alright. So, you saw the power of the deck that we put together. 
it's a graveyard based deck with a couple of really cool um, ways to interact with the graveyard um, get things back recur value you saw um, harvester of misery which is basically a removal spell or a big 5-4 beater uh, fake your own death just to re-trigger ETBs of any of these cards right honest Rutstein, outcast or green blade Vault Plunder, things like that, and they just redraw you cards. We were 22 deep in our deck. I know why is our opponent? How did they draw cards? But anyway, great game. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and geeking out with me on Magic Draft. I hope you are more interested in play Magic the Gathering. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, guys.